Good evening. My name is Rochelle Crump and I am president and founder of the National Women Veterans United. And I am here tonight for veteran issues, but we're going to talk about women veteran issues and we're going to talk about veteran issues. So tonight I want to start off by just thanking everyone for their service. As an Army veteran, I'm very proud to have served uh, during the Vietnam era. And I'm also very proud to be the president and founder of the National Women Veterans United. Tonight we want to get some call-ins. This is going to kind of be a move-around type uh, show tonight where you can call in if you have an issue or you have a question or you have a comment. We're going to ask you to call later on to 312-738-1060. So watch the screen and follow us tonight on some of the subjects that we will be talking about. Firstly, there's a new Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs director and soon to be a new assistant director. So the new director is retired Brigadier General Stephen Curta, uh, a doctor in psychology. He's highly decorated. He's an Army veteran. He also served in Iraq, so he served during the Iraq and Afghanistan operation during freedom time. And so I have not yet met him. Uh, I look forward to meeting him. And also the new um, assistant director, when that person comes on board also. I served a uh, tenure there as the assistant director, being the first African American and female in the executive staff of IDVA. So I always follow what's going on there. Uh, there's uh, many, many service veteran, uh, veteran service officers. So if you're dealing with benefit claims and you're not sure what to do, you want to check on them. If you don't have a regular service officer, you can always call the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs uh, to seek out one, as well as the National uh, veteran services officers with the American Legion, DAV, VFW, the National Association for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, Purple Heart. There's uh, many of them that you can contact. The key to all of that is not trying to work alone. Uh, you do need a service officer to assist you with your claim. And, uh, you know, you get better results that way. They can assist you. A lot of times, you know, they're overtaxed, overburdened with a lot of cases as well. Uh, we all are aware of the backlog of VA benefits. I don't believe it's getting any better. Uh, we can encourage you to work with the service officer so that they can present a fully developed claim for you so that it could move a little faster. That's part of the new process that they're trying to fulfill, and that is making sure that they can work better with all of the documents needed in order to make a fair and just decision for your benefit claim. So we highly encourage you to seek one of those service officers to complete your claim as well as to find out what the status of it is. So we'll be looking at uh, what the new director of IDVA brings to the table. Every agenda is welcome to help veterans and their families. And that's what I like about the uh, Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs. They can do many new initiatives and not have to necessarily go through, you know, Congress to get those things done. You've heard of the Act of Congress, and sometimes it takes a long time to get new initiatives and projects across the board. So we're uh, welcoming him and also looking forward to his new ideas and how he plans to move the department forward. Also on Wednesday, which is to, uh, next week, June the 27th, uh, from 10 to 3, there is a post-traumatic stress disorder awareness day at the Johnson Prep College. That address is 6350 South Stewart Avenue. It will be supported by the Road Home, uh, by CAPS, and um, the Alan J. Lynch Medal of Honor Veterans Foundation, a very good organization that helps all of our veterans and their families. So again, that is next Wednesday, June 27th at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
the Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Day. This is the Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Month. And so we always want to be mindful of our service members, our comrades who are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and other me mental health issues that we check on them, we continue to encourage them, and we continue to engage them in conversation and in events and activities to keep them going, to keep their spirits lifted because depression and mental health issues are traumatic and we also want to let them know that they're not out here alone. So if you have anything you want to comment on uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, you can call us at 312-738-1060. And that's women and men or family member. We welcome all uh, for your comments. Maybe you just want to find out more information about who you can contact because maybe your loved one, your veteran in your home or your military service member is going through some challenges or changes and you don't know what to do. Uh, these are the types of shows where you can call. We can make some referrals for you, give you information. We just need everyone to be on alert and also to help our veterans who are in the community. Suicide has risen. It has not gone down. Uh, it's it's gone up in, in certain areas and one of the areas that they're finding is that among both veteran and non-veteran women age specific suicide rates and the number of lives lost to suicide are pretty much similar with both peaking between the ages of 35 and 54 across age groups. Uh, women had women veterans had higher rates of suicide but they are substantial lower in suicides than non-veteran women so you know a lot of times we don't ask if women are veterans uh, we just assume that they're not and there are indeed uh, a lot of women in this state there's over 49,000 it looks like we have uh, decreased in the number across the state uh, last year, I think we were at 55 or 56, and now we're at 49. Then that could be as a result of a lot of our World War II women veterans are passing away. Uh, also, many are moving out of the state for various reasons. A lot of times it's for a much healthier environment or because they can no longer uh, stay alone and so they're moving with other family members, their children, things of that nature, or they're moving to uh, much better retirement homes that where they can still be independent, but the weather is good. I know Florida and Texas are two of those areas that a lot of people are moving to. Uh, so we want to make sure that we check on our senior veterans. We want to make sure that they are healthy and that during those hot uh, days, we want to make sure that they're able to have air conditioning or, you know, some other cooling mechanism, places to go, uh, you know, and others that are checking on them. It's very important that we do that. Um, the, the Department of Veterans Affairs are... Um, President number 45 is uh, asking the Veterans Administration health care systems to all provide a plan, uh, a plan to strengthen and modernize the department. Uh, I know over the years they've attempted to do that, and each year, you know, technology increases, uh, a lot of the programs are uh, more available and accessible to veterans, and you know, they continue to see that as a issue and we're glad that they're still looking at it. You know, a lot of people have uh, very various opinions about them privatizing the VA health care system. And, um, you know, it all depends on what kind of health insurance you have or whether or not you have health in insurance at all. And so, you know, those are the things that people have to look at and not just listen to the rumors. You have to do a little research on your own. One, you can Google about just about anything now. Any question, you can go to Google. So, um, you can call us now at 
248-1060. If you have a question, a comment, uh, or you just want to give a shout out to a veteran or a service member. We always like that too. So I'm going to give a shout out right now to all the women in the National Women Veterans United and our association member, Letty, who is our telephone person today. So give her a call so you can just say hi to her or ask a question so that we can hear from you. Um, we're very... Uh, very, very happy about our Women Veterans Center, the only Women Veterans Center in the state of Illinois. We're located at 7907 South Racine in Chicago. And our membership is growing. We also opened a chapter in the Rockford uh, area. And um, those women are doing some amazing things there. Uh, we have a computer lab. We have a book club. Uh, we also have Zumba. We're doing Zumba now. We're trying to stay healthy. As you can see, I need to be doing Zumba. So I am working on Zumba. I'm working on self, you know, and I'm now retired. So, you know, when you are running around doing a lot of things, you want to keep yourself healthy and whole. And I do that because I love what I do in helping people and making sure that veterans, my comrades, are informed about their VA benefits and their resources and services in the community. That's important that we know those things. We don't wait till we get in trouble or we have issues to try to then locate some of those things that can assist us before we get into that trouble. Like uh, people waiting to the third month of their mortgage and they can't pay it. And now they're scrambling, but by that time, they're actually proceeding for foreclosure. So you have to seek out those things and um, ask people, you know, about maybe whether they know someone in the Army, you know, that knows about resources. Check your American Legions, your national uh, organizations, and check the National Women Veterans United because we do know a lot about the resources and about veterans organizations that can assist you. Uh, there's a lot going on with uh, making sure that veterans self-identify so that they can get uh, discounts on their purchases as a consumer in stores and their driver's license with veteran on there. Uh, also, the Veterans Assistance Commission of Cook County uh, is responsible for administering uh, services, resources, and financial assistance to veterans who are struggling with their utility bills, transportation, uh, if they get behind in their rent. Um, they're doing a wonderful job. I serve as the senior, senior vice commander on that organization and they're doing a wonderful job. There's a new superintendent there, John Stetchwit, and uh, we're very proud of the work that he is doing. I've had him on the show before and I'll bring him back again. Uh, election is coming up. Uh, meeting is also coming up. We invite veteran organizations to join the Veterans uh, Assistance Commission of Cook County. Uh, it's a very simple process. We meet on the last Tuesday of every month. So next week on Tuesday the 26th, we will be holding our monthly meeting at the Jesse Brown VA Medical Center at 7 o'clock p.m. on the second floor. If you have any questions about that, please feel free uh, to go to their website or you can contact the National Women Veterans United and we'll be happy to give you that information. If you have a shout out, a, uh, you'd like more information, give us a call at 312-738-1060. And Letty is waiting to hear from you. So um, one of the other things that the National Women Veterans United does is uh, we try to keep up with all of the current affairs so that we can help women to navigate through this very complicated health care system. We encourage others also to utilize the Veterans Resource Center. Uh, they're very helpful. We're located again at 7907 South Racine. Um, a lot of times we can assist with uh, financial, but that's not our primary goal. Our primary goal 
is to ensure that you are connected to services and we also do peer support for women veterans that's our function women veterans those who are still serving and those who are retired discharged we're all branches of service wartime and peacetime officers and enlisted and that's what makes our organization very different uh, from others we know that other organizations are doing amazing things also but we're doing amazing things too so we ask you to look us up google us look online there are some other resources from other agencies and uh, private organizations too that have a lot of discounts and things like that for you. Uh, our website is www.nwvu.org. And uh, also, if you have a pen and paper and you'd like to just call us, you can call us at 872-731-2150. And I'll repeat that before the show is over. Uh, and we would like to hear from you at 312-738-1060. So there's a lot of things also that we do. We support the Girl Scouts. We adopted a Girl Scout unit because we know that they're going to be future leaders. And being a future leader, some may decide to go into the armed forces. And so we have a multitude of women in various um, careers that can tell them a little bit about their service and encourage them to do certain things so that they can rise in the armed forces as you know becoming an officer going through the ROTC program everyone doesn't believe in the ROTC program or for that matter they don't believe in going into the armed forces and that's okay because a lot of people think that they will go to war well, that's not necessarily so because we're already in a war in our communities with the violence. And we encourage veterans to get more involved in their community. I went on a march last week uh, with my church, St. Sabina. I mean, there were more than a thousand people of every culture out you proclaiming the end of violence we have to speak up we have to do something we have to unify so that people will know that they care and that we are supporting those who have lost their loved ones uh, we're trying to make a difference in the community to let people know those younger people who are the perpetrators of you know of crime that they don't this is not the lifestyle that they have to live in there are a number of organizations and people in general who are willing to mentor to lead them to jobs to help them financially to get back in school all they have to do is reach out and I think that, you know, and this is just my personal opinion, I think if we start identifying these parents whose children they are, I think things might change a little bit. We have to start holding people accountable, just like we hold our legislators accountable for things that they do wrong. And we should be rating how they do things because it's important as we move forward and we have to have leaders, but we want good leaders. We want those people who are willing to do everything that they can and not just uh, seek for themselves. We have a caller. Caller, are you there? Uh, good evening. I've watched your show before and I've always enjoyed it. Yeah, can you speak up just a little bit for me? Of course. You're um, talking about children committing violence and how to redirect them. Yes, about the is violence. Yes, is there any relationship between the violence that the veterans you know what? The Coalition of Veterans Organization, we've tried to get and bring veterans together to do mm -hmm. some things, you know, in the community. It's, even if that. it's just a simple march through the no, community no, I, so that I, they I, know I, that people in the community have served in the armed forces and that we also, you know, need to stand ground. I mean, I, if, I my thought served, is this. If you served we stand in the armed ground. forces, if I'm you sorry? served in the armed forces, if you served in the armed forces, you've perpetuated violence against other people's in other countries 
because you were told to do it in the same way the young gang members often perpetrate violence against people because they were told to do it by their friends and their gang leaders. That's, that's true. Thank that, you. That is, that's true. However, we still have a mindset. When we get out of the military, that mindset does not leave us. We're still leaders. And so we should be leading the community. We should be leading youth in our community to higher grounds of learning more things and about understanding what life is really about. And as leaders, we're guidance. So I think that we have many, many upstanding veterans in the community who can take on that role to mentor some children. Do you agree with that? Okay, so, but, you know, we ask that uh, veterans go to the communities where they can and lend their leadership skills to those veterans in the community. And it can start out, as I mentioned, we adopted the Girl Scouts. Adopt a Boy Scout unit. Teach them. They do various things that are good things. So we want to make sure that they continue that role as they grow to the next level of even being in the Boy Scouts. Maybe they won't always be in the Boy Scout, but maybe when they leave the Boy Scouts, they'll leave with something positive of knowing that there are other careers out here that they can engage in and they can do well in. And we can also let them know how to reach out and access some of those services that are available for them. The city is hiring all these children uh, for the summer. Hopefully they will continue on with not just having summer jobs for them, but after school jobs as well, because we need them. Poverty is a big issue in our communities, and we need to recognize that, and they need to do something about it. And we have to make them do something about it as community members. So... I say that, you know, from the standpoint of we have to do something. Enough is enough with violence. Enough is enough about the lack of resources and services in the community because it's just not affecting your common residents. It is also affecting our veterans, my comrades, and myself as well. And so we have to be willing to stand up for those things that we believe in. We stood up for other countries and now we have to stand up at home where it makes a difference for where we are, where we're now living, where we're now serving in the community. And the thing that I always tell women veterans is that, you know, when we encounter challenges, we don't give up, we don't give in, we fight harder. And that's what we should be doing. We should be fighting harder for those things that we need in our communities. And so, again, we look forward to uh, women veterans reaching out to us at the National Women Veterans United. Again, we're located at, at 7907 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. Our phone number is 872-731-2000. Two one five zero. You can go to our website at www.nwvu.org, and then we're also going to have a um, our Zumba. We have Zumba. This is our schedule. It's on our website. Again, you go to www.nwvu.org. Uh, we're working with the eight dimensions of wellness. We want to make sure that emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, because that's another thing that we need to be teaching young people is how to manage money, how to make earnest money, and then how to manage it. Uh, they need to start looking at their retirement. You can go on the Social Security site, sign up. You'll get that information about the issues and the ongoing lack of continued uh, revenue for Social Security. Because as baby boomers, we are sucking the life out of the Social Security Administration. So, you know, there's a lot of things to learn about. Our children need to learn those things also. And uh, we're challenging every veteran. Get involved, get involved, get involved, and stand down for what we do best, and that is to lead. 
So thank you for watching CAN TV, Cable Access Network. My name is Rochelle Crump and I am from the National Women Veterans United.